In the book, I have pictures here showing this more 3D view of what's happening. So the larger diameter, of course, establishes the datum axis, and then position tolerance is controlling the other features axis. So you're creating a cylindrical tolerance zone in which the axis of the high points has to lie within. Controls location and orientation, but not form. Now, run out is slightly different. You're shifting the tolerance zone to the surface. So when you control the surface within that tolerance zone, not only do you control location and orientation, but you're also controlling the form of the feature as well. Now, total runout is your 3D specification. So look how the tolerance zone is two concentric cylinders extending the full length of the feature. That's going to control your three-dimensional form, your cylindricity, your taper, and your straightness on the surface as well. Now, circular runout is just your two-dimensional version. So in any 2D specification, we're talking about cross-sections one at a time. Take a cross-section, evaluate the runout. Take another cross-section, evaluate the runout. Take another cross-section, evaluate the runout, but you don't compare them to each other. Now what this means is our shaft could become tapered or even kind of roller coaster ride shaped here as long as the other side matches. Each one of these has perfect circular runout because we place our indicator at one location, make sure it runs out true. Yep. Now when you run it to a new location, you can re-zero the indicator to make sure that runs true. But you're not comparing the cross sections to each other. So total runout would control your taper and your straightness on the surface. Circular runout is only controlling your circularity. So here's the two formulas that I think are helpful. Position plus the cylindricity is equal to our total runout. And that's because that's three-dimensional. But a position plus a circularity, which is 2D, that's going to be your circular runout. Now, also a question I get with runout sometimes is, how many cross-sections do I measure? Well, first, when I say circular runout here, how many cross-sections have to be within the tolerance? All of them. <laughs> My specification says all cross-sections have to be within the tolerance zone. Now, how many you choose to measure well, that's a different conversation. That's part of a quality plan. So what I want is everything to be within the tolerance. What I choose to measure, three or five or 100 cross sections, that's how much risk versus cost I'm willing to take. So I don't tell you how to measure it. I tell you what I functionally need. Then inspection is going to come up with their plan, the best way to measure that, and with the least amount of cost involved. Now I want to show one more way that runout can be used. It's not as common, but it can be used on surfaces at right angles to a datum axis. So here I have a datum axis A on this surface and a datum B on the back. So we control the location of where these surfaces are going to be with a profile taunts. And that will locate that relative to the datum reference frame. Then they have a tighter total runout on there to control the orientation. So the tolerance zone for this will be two parallel planes that are perpendicular to the datum axis. So if you grab that feature to establish the datum axis, and you put a dial indicator on that face, you're watching how true that face could be, the TIR, total indicator reading, that has to be less than the 0.1. That's creating that two parallel plane tolerance zone, also controlling perpendicularity. So that's all I want to show here is that perpendicularity and total runout are the same on a face 90 degrees to your datum axis. However, perpendicularity and circular runout are not the same. Circular runout is cross sections at a time, so you're going to place the indicator at one cross section, make sure that circular element runs true, then move it towards the center, make sure that circular element runs true. Move it to the center, that circular element runs true. But they don't have to be compared to each other. That allows that surface to be bowl or dish shaped as long as each circular element runs true to your datum axis. I think this is pretty rare. Uh, for the first one here, total runout, I like using perpendicularity instead. I think that's much easier to understand. And circular runout, it has its uses, but I think that just a perpendicularity <laughs> can be a much better way to control that too.